Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Open Core Legacy Patcher has had its first major release from version 3 to version 4. You might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, didn't we just talk about version 3.3 and all the changes included in it? Well, the Open Core Legacy Patcher devs don't stand by. They continually work on the release to refine it and come out with fixes and new improvements. And one of the biggest improvements of this update is the long awaited built from the ground up new GUI application. I'm so excited to show you how to use this new app and all the new features that it includes. Let's jump in and get started. Okay, first let's quickly go over the change notes so you can understand a little bit about what's going on here. Then I'll jump into the full demo of the brand new GUI app. With the release of 4.0 and 4.1, we're proud to show off our new GUI written in WX Python for far better interoperability between the UI and the core patcher. This means that we're able to more easily keep features in sync, meaning users should receive the same hardware detection and other build features between the terminal app and the graphical user interface app. If you're a long devoted TUI user, we highly recommend trying out the new GUI. However, the TUI will remain so users will still be able to use their preferred method. So if you use the TUI and you love it, there's no problem. It will continually be updated. Also, what's important to notice is that when we scroll down to the releases, there's a brand new release. You, there is always the GUI app from the previous version, but you'll notice here that the GUI offline app is here. And if you didn't see my previous video that explains that means that if you have certain older models from 2011 around there and older that Monterey removed certain Wi-Fi drivers so if you install an update and it comes back up and then you try to use the TUI update to install the patches to reactivate the Wi-Fi you won't be able to connect to the internet to be able to get the patches so the offline app is a little bit bigger you can see 448 megabytes compared to the smaller app is 41 megabytes, but it includes all the patches built in so you don't have to go out there and download it. So it's really nice to be able to just have the offline app. And if you're even unsure, just download the offline app. It's only 500 megs. But again, that's for around 2011 uh, down older devices. So back to the change notes here. Other noteworthy changes in the release is it resolves a network connection issue on root patched Wi-Fi cards. So if you had one of those Macs that we just talked about and you were having trouble connecting to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi or getting the list out when you click the Wi-Fi icon that was fixing this release. It was mentioned that it was previously fixed, but there was still a small bug in there and that was fixed in the 4.1 release. Also, the app supports update checks. So in the future, you don't have to go to the GitHub right away to check, hey, do I need an update? Is there an update out? As soon as you start the app, it runs an update check. And if there's an update available, it'll show you and it'll take you right to the GitHub page to download the new version. Also, there is a really great new feature that was added. A lot of users have mentioned that when you click on the menu bar up here and there's squares or shadows in the in the menu bar when you when you go through the menu bar like this, there's a brand new configurable option in the application that allows you to turn on what is called as blur beta. And what that'll do is once that feature is activated, it gets rid of those squares and those shadows in your menu bar items. It's a really great feature. Now that we've got all the features to talked about with version 4. Let's jump right into the live demo. Okay, our demo unit today is a 2011 Mac Mini running macOS Monterey 12.1. Now, if we go into the applications folder, you will see that I'm running an older version of Open Core Legacy Patcher, version 3.3, the previous release. Now, if you're running version 3.1 or below, you're gonna have to watch my video, and I'll include a link in the description on how to update to a newer version because of all the changes that are in the release update. So there's a major information that you're going to need if you want to be able to update from 0.3.1 or lower. If you're running 0.3.2 or 0.3.3, like in this situation, you don't have to do anything extra. It's a very simple update. So let's first start with that. So all we need to do is go to the Open Core Legacy Patcher page and download the latest release of version four. We'll scroll down here and we are going to use the GUI app. Moving forward, the GUI app is going to be what we will be using for our main demonstrations going forward. So what we'll do is we will download the offline app. But what's nice about downloading the offline app is you won't have to question, am I gonna need the Wi-Fi patches or not? You're gonna be prepared. So we've got the offline app here and I'm also going 
going to grab the TUI app so we can follow along and I can show you the different steps in each app. Okay, the finished downloading, we'll move the first one over, which is the GUI app over to applications. So we'll open up the TUI first and then we will open up the GUI. And there we go. We've got our TUI version 0.4.1 and our brand new GUI or graphical user interface application for Open Core Legacy Patcher. Now, if you look at both menu bar items or both menu items, they're pretty much the same. Build Open Core, build Open Core. But notice how install Open Core is also under this new section here. Uh, install post volume patch is number three. Now we have a button over here for post root patch. Now also notice that we can now create a Mac OS installer and that over here is number six here. The patcher settings is number five and that's in setting and the change model is also moved over under settings. So the idea here is to move seven different options including quit into five different buttons over here. So it's a lot more streamlined and you can tell right up that right up here just like over here you see the version that you're running and the model that it detects and that's the most important thing why I always recommended the TUI app because the TUI app could do hardware detection. Now the GUI app has all that so that's why we want to be using that going forward so let's start let's apply the open core legacy patcher settings to the internal hard drive of this mac first we'll set the settings of the app then we'll build and then install the open core legacy patcher to the internal hard drive of this mac mini so let's go into settings and we can see we've got a full load of settings here we can see that we can change the model if we wanted to but we're going to leave it in there because obviously that's the detected hardware model the 6 comma 1 2011 mac mini now no Notice here's all the settings. Allow native models. Remember, this is from my previous video that I showed you how to enable AirPlay to new supported Macs. Can you believe that? 2015, 16, 17 Macs can't even use AirPlay. You can use Open Core Legacy Patcher to enable AirPlay on those supported Macs. And that's what you do. You click on this button here. You can have verbose output, like we've seen in the past. We can have debug settings, secure boot model, and show boot picker. So we're gonna unselect show boot picker. And the idea is, is that when you start the Mac, you will not see the boot picker. It'll boot right to the Apple icon and the progress bar, just like a native Mac. So we're gonna turn that off. Also keep in mind that there's a low acceleration for 10.14 and 10.15 Catalina. You can use Open Core Legacy Patcher on Mojave and Catalina, but it's just kind of in beta form. It was just put there in case you wanted to mess around with it. it even the Open Core Legacy Patcher devs recommend DOS Suits Patcher if you wanted to do that. You also have SIP setting, Symbios settings, miscellaneous settings, non-metal settings, and developer settings. You shouldn't even need to really go into any of these settings here unless you really are a developer and you wanted to set specific settings. But again, we can take a quick peek at there. Here's the SIP settings. We can click on return. There is the SM BIOS settings. So that's the spoof level, level that we talked about in the 0.3.3 video. In the miscellaneous settings, you have feature unlock status here and also Firewire boot. Let's say you have a Mac Pro and you wanted to boot your installer off of Firewire, you would have to enable Firewire boot and we can go back and we can look at the non-metal settings that we can set in here. And this is the beta blur setting that I was talking about with the menu bar uh, shadowing. When you click and you see some shadows in here whenever you move around, all you need to do is click on this to enable that and that's it, return to settings. And we're gonna leave that on for this build. And then developer settings, you shouldn't even need to come in here at all unless you're a developer or you're having certain issues. So we'll return back to settings, we'll return back to the main menu and we're gonna click on build and install open core. So the first thing you'll notice you'll see the window open and it doesn't start automatically you have to click on the build open core button first so we'll click on build open core and just like it did in here it shows you all the information that it does and it puts all those temporary files to this location here you're not done yet you don't want to have to go back or anything the next button you can see it changed to install open core so that's the next thing we're going to take those settings and install them to the internal hard drive so click on install open core here now what it's going to do is it's going to check all the disks on the si system i recommend if you have any usb or external hard drives in the, at this point, disconnect them now. And you can see that it's only detected the internal hard drive and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Click on disk zero and it's gonna say, hey, select a partition. We're gonna put it right on the EFI. So select the EFI and then what it's gonna say is, hey, to do this mounting option, we need an administrator password. So we'll type in our administrator password here. Enter. And there it goes. 
you can see really quickly here it mounted that EFI partition and it unmounted it and the transfer is complete and we can turn return back to the main menu so now open core legacy patcher was built with the brand new application and installed to the internal hard drive so that's done so now let's say you need to install the post volume patches this is one of the most confusing parts because with Big Sur, it was really cut and dry. If you had a metal compatible graphics card, you didn't need the post volume patches. With Mac OS Monterey, everything has changed because Apple has removed certain features from Mac OS Monterey for older Macs. For example, for like those ones that I mentioned earlier, it removed the Wi-Fi drivers that was needed. So how do you know if you need to install the post volume patch? Click on it and I'll show you right away. Available patches for the system, Intel Ivy Bridge. So we know right off the bat that this system needs the post volume install patches. And this is how you'll be able to check in the future. And keep in mind, after every system update, Apple wipes out all those settings so you have to go back in here and apply the settings so everything works again. So Wi-Fi works again or the graphics acceleration works again. That's how you know you need to install. So for example, for a 2010 MacBook Pro, you'll see Wi-Fi patch right in here. And then you'll know that you definitely do need that and it'll fix your Wi-Fi. But now we're going to do the start root patching. So we'll click on start root patching. I want to explain this part. What has to happen here is that the application needs to be restarted so it can run as administrator to be able to install these root patches. So what we need to do is click on yes, and it'll say, now we need to enter our password to be able to do this. So we'll do that now. And as you see, the application will say that it's countdown to closing the app, give it four seconds, and then it'll close and reopen running as an administrator. The application is relaunched as an administrator. So now we can go back into the post root patch and then click start root patching. There we go. And as you can see here, this is what was what I was talking about. It would need to reach out to the server to be able to grab those drivers to be able to install the root patches. But since we have the offline app, everything here is in the app. So that's why I recommend just grab the offline app and then you don't have to worry about whether you need to have the offline or non-offline version. As you can see here, it is applying the patches here. And the final part here is rebuilding the kernel cache. And as you can see, this may take a little bit of time, creating the new API. PFS snapshot, unmounting the root volume, and we're almost done. And there we go. Please reboot the machine for the patches to take effect. We'll click return to main menu, and we can go to open core patcher and hit quit, and we'll reboot. Okay, let's go over another really great feature of the brand new version 4, and that's Create Mac OS Installer. So, you might have been used to watching my previous videos that show you how to download the application from my website here, the install assistant package, and then using terminal to install that to the drive, and then using disk utility to format it, and then realizing that Open Core Legacy Patch, you can't see it. When you went to click on erase, uh, we were forgetting to set the scheme to GUID. Don't even have to worry about that anymore. And that's the beauty of the new Create Mac OS Monterey install or Mac OS Monterey or Big Sur or Future OS. And that's the beauty of the Create Mac OS installer option in the brand new application. So let's click on that to see what that does. So the first thing we get is that we have the ability to download the full installer from Mac OS right from the app. What it's going to be looking for, for example, if you have an existing installer, you can click on this, use existing Mac OS installer. Like let's say you, you downloaded that from my site and it's an application and see it checks the applications folder to see if it's in there. So right now, if you look, I have the install Mac OS Monterey in the applications folder. So it's going to be able to find that. And as you can see, it already found that and it's, it found version 12.1 in the applications folder. So for example, if I wanted to build that install right now, I could just click on that and it would get started. But we'll go back to the main menu and I wanted to show you what that download option looks like. So let's click on download Mac OS installer. And what it's gonna do is it's going to go to the manifest from the software update server and see what is available from Apple to be able to download right now. And this changes all the time. Apple does not keep all of their installers on the software update server. They only keep a couple versions behind. And you'll be able to see that here in a second once it shows the full installer list. We have Mac OS Big Sur 
from 11.6.2 all the way back to 11.5.2. For macOS Monterey, it has all the versions, even back to the original version of 12.0.1. But again, in the future, 12.0.1 will disappear. It'll be just like Big Sur. It'll only probably keep around five versions behind. So all you need to do is click on which one you want and it'll begin to immediately download. So once that's done, then you can go back in here and it'll go to the next part. It'll be able to create the installer. So we'll do that now. We'll cl click on use existing macOS installer. We're going to use our version that's in the applications folder. And then it's going to say, hey, what disks are you going to use? Now, let's let's keep it in mind. Read what this says here. The selected USB will be erased. Please back up your files. Now, if you have multiple partitions on your USB, this will erase the entire disk again to prevent against the scheme problem that we've had in the past where OpenCore Legacy Patcher could not pick up the USB because it wasn't formatted in the correct scheme. This fixes that and that it has to format the entire disk to be able to set the scheme properly. So again, if you have multiple partitions on your USB, copy your data off or use a different USB because the entire USB will be erased. So as you can see here, I've already had a previous installer of macOS Monitor here. I don't care because I'm going to erase that and create a brand new one. So we're going to click on that disk three, our SanDisk USB. And there it is, creating macOS installer. We have to type in our administrator password first for it to begin and enter. And there it goes. It first it formats it and then it immediately uses create install media to install directly to the USB drive. Creating the macOS installer can take some time. If you have an older slower like a USB 2.0 or one of the cheap ones that you can get, the read write speed is a lot slower and it'll take a lot longer. But if you have one of the newer faster ones like a good SanDisk that's 3.0 or 3.1, it'll go actually pretty quick. App tells you how much, how many megabytes have already been written. The installer app itself is anywhere between 10 and 12 gigabytes in size. So you can see this will take a little bit of time. Okay, our USB installer for macOS Monterey was built and ready to go. And now all we need to do is install OpenCore Legacy Patcher to the USB so we can boot from it and install macOS Monterey. All we need to do is click on the settings to set any kind of settings that we need. I always click on show boot picker off, but you can leave that on for the USB if you need to. We'll click on re uh, return to the main menu. That's really the only setting that you would need to set because what's nice about the application is it's all the default settings for you. You really don't really need to change anything. Now all you need to do is click Click on build and install open core. Click on build open core. And that's it. It put it to the temporary folder location. Now what you need to do is click on install open core. And now, as you can see, it's a little bit different from when we installed it to the internal hard drive. We can see that it has the internal hard drive here. And if you're not sure about the disk numbers or the names of the manufacturer, look at the size. Obviously, my internal hard drive is not a 30 gig uh, SSD, but you can see that it's a 500 gigabyte SSD. And my USB installer is a 30 gigabyte USB drive. So we'll click on that guy right there. And we are going to click on the EFI partition for the USB enter in our administrator password and there it goes. It's mounting the EFI partition on the USB, installing the files and it'll unload and we'll be good to go. And that's it. It's done. Return to the main menu. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the help section. Let's click on the help section. What's nice here is that it links you to the official guide. If we click on the official guide, it'll open up Safari and it'll bring us to the official open core legacy patcher guide. Click getting started and it'll give you all the information that you might need here. The next option is, is that if you wanted to get some personalized help, you could click here to go to the official discord server what's nice about the discord server is, is again there's a lot of people that really want to help get your open core legacy patcher set up now keep in mind the server is all volunteers so there's a lot of questions that come into the discord server just have a little bit of patience and ask your question and if it doesn't get answered right away a lot of times it takes a little bit of time and some people just don't know what the answer is but everybody does their best and finally we have official support phone number you click on this button and it'll immediately open up the facetime app and FaceTime McCullough and Dina K. Now, if that's not personalized support, I don't know what is. We'll click on return to the main menu, and that's Open Core Legacy Patcher version 0.4. What an amazing release. I can't hand it to the developers, Dina K and McCullough, enough for continually fixing, improving, and building brand new features into this patcher. As you can tell, I absolutely love Open Core Legacy Patcher. I can't say it 
enough good things about this application and all the developers that put their hard work into this app to make it great. I hope this video helped you. I know it was a little longer, but I wanted to go over all the features in this brand new application. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.